uh, while we continue our study of uh, fluid mechanics i am introducing reynolds number here in this video so first let's try to understand reynolds number and then we will move to critical velocity so i am taking help of uh, some definitions for Reynolds number and then we will get into the explanation part of it. So let's go through this very quickly. Basically Reynolds number is a dimensionless quantity. So it's a, it's a constant, uh, not constant exactly, but it's a dimensionless. It does not have a unit to determine the type of flow, laminar or turbulent. So if we have an idea about Reynolds number, then we get to know whether a flow is laminar or turbulent. So let's say we have a pipe of circular cross section and there's a fluid flowing in this in this direction whether this fluid is laminar or turbulent we can determine that by finding out the Reynolds number so Reynolds numbers gives us an idea about the type of flow laminar or turbulent how exactly to find out we'll come to that very soon also Reynolds number is defined as the ratio of inertial forces to that of viscous forces so that's another way of looking at Reynolds number so Reynolds number is basically a ratio of inertial force to viscous force and Reynolds number is given by rho Vd by mu. So let us now focus on this equation. Reynolds number is rho Vd by mu, where mu is the viscosity of the fluid. This viscosity of the fluid, D is the characteristic dimension, V is the velocity of the fluid and rho is the density of the fluid. So uh, how did we get this equation? Basically this was uh, equation was obtained by Osborne Reynolds in 1883 and he conducted a number of experiments and found out that the velocity of the fluid or the Reynolds number depends upon these quantities the density of the fluid, velocity of the fluid, the characteristic dimension and the viscosity. So if you take the units of all these terms rho Vd by mu you will find that it does not have a unit. Uh, Reynolds number is as we said earlier dimensionless quantity. Let's focus on characteristic dimension D. We already know what density is, what velocity is, what viscosity is. What do we mean by characteristic dimension? Now, characteristic, uh, characteristic dimension, supposing if the pipe has a circular cross section, then its characteristic dimension is the diameter D. But we will not have a circular cross section all the time. Sometimes we may have a square cross section, probably sometimes. A rectangular cross section sometimes the way water flows in a channel so the dimensions of the pipe in which the fluid is flowing may vary and therefore here this d does not stand for diameter stands for characteristic dimension and this characteristic dimension d is given by area of cross section by the weighted perimeter area of cross section you know say for example we have this square pipe and if the water is flowing let's let's say let's let me show it over here let's say this is a square pipe l l and let's say this water is flowing in this pipe and this let us say is let's say 2 l by 3 the water is flowing in this pipe then in that case the characteristic dimension would be cross section area which will be l into l the cross section area of the pipe weighted perimeter will be l plus 2l by 3 plus 2l by 3 so it will be l plus 2l by 3 plus 2l by 3 so i can get from this the characteristic dimension of this particular pipe so that is what d is about and reynolds and brothers is the product of these terms The other th fact is Reynolds number is a ratio of inertial forces and viscous forces. So what are inertial forces? Inertial forces are forces which come into play because of the mass. So inertial force will be mass into acceleration. And viscous forces are forces which come into play because of the viscosity of the fluid. And therefore these would be given by uh, mu the viscosity into area of contact and the velocity gradient of so this is these are inertial forces these are viscous forces and it is the relationship between these two which decides whether the flow is going to be 
laminar or turbulent. As far as the values of Reynolds number is concerned, if the value of Reynolds number is between 0 to 2000, then the flow is laminar or streamlined. Between 2000 to 3000, the flow becomes uh, unstable, unsteady. So there is a kind of a transition happening from laminar to turbulent. And if it is greater than 3000, then it becomes or it is identified as 3000. So what happens is if I am given a pipe, I can put in these values of rho, v, d, mu and then get an idea about uh, the type of flow. Now, if you look at this equation, R e is equal to v rho d by mu. You can see the velocity. As the velocity keeps on changing, the Reynolds number will keep on changing. As the velocity keeps on increasing, the Reynolds number will keep on increasing. And thus, we get a relationship between velocity and Reynolds number. And that particular velocity at which the flow changes from being laminar to turbulent is known as the critical velocity, which is denoted by Vc. So, Vc is the critical velocity at which this transition happens. Now, the fact is, this transition is not uh, very, very clearly demarcated. I mean, there is a transition phase, so it is very difficult to identify exactly what is the critical velocity. But we can get an idea about a range of velocities when the flow changes from being laminar to turbulent. So, the way we have this 2000 to 3000 is a range for unstable flow. Similarly, we could have a range for critical velocity that between these two values, if the velocity lies, then there is transition happening. If the velocity is less than this, then we will have surely a laminar flow. And if it increases beyond this, we will certainly have a turbulent flow. So, this is critical velocity. Critical velocity is that velocity at which the flow changes from being laminar to turbulent. And we can use this equation to find out critical velocity if we know Reynolds number and these values. The last point I want to make in this video is that we said that Reynolds number is a ratio of inertial forces, inertial forces to viscous forces. And you can see that in this equation that we have density over here which is related to mass which is, which is connected to inertial forces and over here we have viscosity which is connected to viscous forces. So that is how this also turns out to be a ratio of inertial and viscous forces. What is the relationship between density and viscosity? Generally, we think that if density increases, viscosity will increase because the molecules will be more tightly packed and therefore viscosity will increase. That does not is not necessarily not the case. Viscosity depends more on temperature. In case of liquids, as temperature increases, what we observe is viscosity decreases. So it is more a function of temperature and not density. Let me give an example. If you take the example of mercury, for example, mercury, as you know, has got very high density, but its viscosity is very low. Otherwise, we would start thinking that if density is very high, it would have very uh, high viscosity, but that is not the case. And as against mercury, if you take the case of any lubricating oil, in that case, as compared to density of mercury, its density is very low, but viscosity is higher as compared to mercury. So, density and viscosity are not directly related and therefore, this interesting relationship between these two uh, gives rise to the concept of Reynolds number which again helps us to identify whether a flow is laminar or turbulent. Thank you.